Welcome guys and girls to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to learn about a very important concept, deployment. So any enterprise implementation of Kubernetes uses deployment uh, for sure. So all right, let's jump into it and learn about it. So let's start from pods. Uh, so by this time, you guys and girls know like a pod uh, can run a certain container image. So let's say you want to run a web server. Uh, so maybe you are running Nginx version 1.16 in a pod and to make it highly available, uh, you spin up more pods with Nginx uh, version 1.16 and then you put all this pod uh, in a replica set uh, so that one of the pods, if it goes down, uh, the replica set will restore it and the system can achieve high availability. However, what if you want to deploy those Nginx version 1.16 to 1.17, right? Uh, so replica set cannot really help there. Uh, replica set is just gonna uh, spin up a new pod if a pod goes down to keep it at the desired state. So that's where deployment comes into play. Uh, so you can think of deployment as uh, another wrapper wrapping around a replica set. So this is a higher level construct than replica set. Like a pod, wraps around a container and a replica set wraps around the group of pods. Similarly, a deployment or the deploy object wraps around a replica set. So deployment provides declarative updates for pods and replica sets. So you describe a desired state in a deployment file and the deployment controller changes the actual state to the desired state at a controlled rate. And you can define deployments to create a new replica set or to remove existing deployments and adopt all their resources with new deployments. Um, so let's take a look at this with an actual example and things will become much more clear. Okay, so on the left, we have the deployment uh, manifest file. Uh, so let's start from the bottom uh, because we want to start from the pod level. So you can see under template, uh, we have the spec and the container image is Nginx version 1.16. Uh, so what it's gonna do, it is gonna create a pod uh, with a version of Nginx 1.16 and it is gonna put a label for these pods of environment colon test, right? Because as you can see, the label here says environment colon test. Why there are three copies of the pod? Uh, is because this replicas is set to three. However, uh, this replicas not only will create three copies of the pod, uh, it will create another Kubernetes resource uh, called replica set, right? So you guys and girls already know this. And this replica set, if you see the match labels says environment test. So basically uh, this replica set is gonna manage pods which has level environment colon test. So you can say this replica set is managing these three pods because each of these pod has the label environment colon test. Okay, and now on the top level, we have this kind of deployment. So what that does is create the deployment object. And how does it know that it should manage uh, this replica set and this, uh, these pods? Well, this goes back to label. So label is super important. So you can see under deployment, the labels is environment test and under the template metadata for the containers, uh, the labels is environment test. So if that labels match, then this deployment is gonna manage these pods. And this replica set uh, will also have its own label uh, and that would be environment colon test which matches the level of deployment and that's how the deployment will manage this replica set. Uh, so this actually uh, brings up an interesting point. Uh, so let's say you create a pod outside of this deployment manifest file, right? Uh, maybe you just use a kubectl command uh, to create a pod uh, with the label environment colon test. So actually, this replica set and this deploy will start managing it. So let's say uh, you create uh, pods using just the imperative kubectl commands, not through this manifest file, but just a single standalone command. Let's say you create uh, one pod uh, with Nginx 1.16 and label environment test. 
and then you apply this manifest file. Uh, what's gonna happen is this manifest file is gonna only deploy two of the pods uh, because since you um, already created a pod with this label, this deployment will start managing it. And since the replica is set as three, uh, the desired state is always three. Uh, so this manifest file will just create the remaining of the pods to make it three. Uh, so this manifest file will create two pods and the one pod will be from your standalone command. So now we talked about uh, how the manifest file works. So one thing we haven't uh, seen so far in a manifest file is this section, this min ready second stan, strategy, rolling update, a max search, max unavailable, and type. Uh, so we're gonna come back to that. Uh, just hold off for a couple minutes. Okay, so uh, replica set restores pod, right? So this deployment will create a replica set uh, and then it will have three pods. Uh, so even if one pod uh, goes bad, becomes unavailable or something, uh, this replica set always has to keep three pods up and running. So this is gonna create another pod and then remove this uh, bad pod. So like replica set restores pod, deployment restores replica set. So if you try to delete this replica set or this replica set goes bad, this will restore the replica set uh, with the running pods super fast. Like, so we're gonna see this in a demo. Uh, let's say you uh, try to delete this replica set and it will come back within a second. Okay, so now uh, let's take a look at this section of the manifest file. So what it does is it defines how you can upgrade your pods. Uh, so let's say you are running Nginx version 1.16, right, in this pods. So I made a change. Uh, if you look at the image, so I upgraded from Nginx 1.16 to version 1.17. So this highlighted section defines how the pods will be upgraded. Uh, so let's let's take a look. So this max search one defines how many pods it can go above defined replicas during rolling update. So I know that sounds a little complex, uh, but it'll it'll be clear. So let's take a look. So let's say uh, you apply this manifest file. So what's gonna happen is this deployment will create another uh, replica set, and it will start managing it. And then a new pod will come up with Nginx version 1.17. So see, now there are four copies of the pod running. Why there are four copies allowed? Because this max surge says one. So basically there could be four copies of the pod. And this new pod will come up with Nginx version 1.17. Now we have to remove uh, one of the old pods, which is running Nginx version 1.16, right? However, this mean ready seconds 10 means it's gonna wait 10 seconds before it takes away an old pod. If the new pod is running fine within 10 seconds, uh, then it's gonna delete one of the old pod. Then another new pod will come in with Nginx 1.17, uh, and this is all under new uh, replica set, right? Uh, and then after 10 seconds, uh, another old pod will go away. And then you got the idea, another Nginx 1.17 uh, pod will come up. And after 10 seconds, the last remaining old pod will go away. And then this new replica set will have these three pods and the original replica set will be empty. Uh, so at this point, you can actually go and delete this replica set and it will be deleted. However, if you try to delete this new replica set, which has three running pods, this deployment will restore it. However, for the original replica set, since it has no pods running, uh, that you will be able to uh, delete this original replica set. And the last remaining thing is this max unavailable zero. So this is an optional field. Uh, so what it means is maximum number of unavailable pods from the desired state. Uh, so what do I mean? Uh, so desired state is there will be three replicas and the max unavailable is zero. 
So the update has to be done in such a way that there is at least three pods running. So if I have put max unavailable as one, then what that means is maximum unavailable pods taken away from the desired state is one. So basically the deployment has to be done in such a way uh, that there are two replicas of the pod always running. Why two? Because uh, desired state is three, max unavailable is one, uh, so three minus one is two. And also we're gonna see all of this in a demo, <laughs> pretty nifty stuff. All right, so now let's jump into a demo uh, where we're gonna see all this stuff in action. So what we're gonna do is first implement the deployment file that we went through, and then we're gonna delete some stuff, <laughs> and then we are going to update the container image via deployment file. All right, let's get into it. Okay, I have a console, I have a EKS cluster running. Uh, so let me show you this, kubectl get all. Uh, so it's a brand new cluster, nothing installed, uh, pretty boring. However, things are gonna get heated up pretty soon. So let's do kubectl get nodes. So you can see there are two uh, nodes running. However, there are no resources installed yet. Okay, we are gonna deploy this Nginx deployment with rolling.yaml file. Uh, so it should deploy a deployment object, a replica set, and uh, three pods for this container with Nginx version 1.16. Okay, how do we deploy? kubectl apply minus F, Nginx, let me just tap this, press enter. Okay, test deploy created. Okay, let's now kubectl get all again. Okay, so it created these three pods, it's already running, created a deployment, and then it created this uh, replica set. All right, let's spice things up, shall we? <laughs> so now let's delete uh, one of the pods, and then this replica set has the three desired pod and three current pods. As soon as I delete one of the pods, uh, the replica set, uh, we'll see that the desired pod is three, but the current pod is two, so it is gonna spin up another pod. Um, all right, let's test it out. kubectl delete pod, and then the name of the pod, test deploy. Okay, so we are going to uh, delete this pod with the specific name. Let's do this. Okay, deleted, now let's get all, you should see a pod coming up. Wow, that's pretty quick. <laughs> so this pod with J5PBZ deleted, and then um, and it brought up this 8SBDV pod. Uh, who did that? This replica set. Now we are going to go one level higher, right? Remember, replica set restores pod, deployments restores replica set. Now we are going to delete this uh, replica set. Okay, so let's delete this uh, replica set. How do we do this? kubectl delete rs and then the name. All right, let's do this. Okay, now let me just put guide rs. See, it's back up. Uh, you, can, you can see that it's back up because the edge is three seconds. Uh, so this is like incredibly quick. Um, so, okay, so we proved our theory about that. And now we are going to update the version from 1.16 to 1.17. However, uh, let's just uh, run a describe command and validate the current version that's running. How do we do that? kubectl describe pods. Okay, so it's gonna give me what image is running in the pods for all three pods. Okay, you can see on the containers, uh, Nginx and then the version is image Nginx colon 1.16. Okay, and also you can see the labels is environment equal to test and this is an automated system label. But this is the important one, labels colon environment equals to test. Okay, so let's run a describe on the replica set. Okay, you can see uh, under selector, it manages any pod with the level environment equal to test. 
Also, this replica set has its own label environment equal to test. Let's look up the deployment. kubectl get deployment. Okay, how about we describe this? kubectl describe deployment. Okay, kubectl describe deployment. Uh, this one has labels environments equal to test. Selector is also environment equal to test. Okay, so now you can see how everything is uh, tied together. And this also said the pod template is image nginx uh, 1.16. Okay, so let me clean this up. So remember how I said, when you uh, update the container image, how deploy creates another replica set and slowly new pods come under this new replica set and the old pods gets deleted under old or original replica set. Uh, so I'm gonna show that to you guys and girls. Okay, let's make this version 1.17. Go back to command. So I'm going to run the same uh, file again. All right. Okay, now let's see, kubectl get all. You should see two replica sets now. Here you go, see it created a new replica set where desired 333, it created one new after 10 seconds, this will become two. So let's try it out, kubectl get all. Here you go, two, two, two. I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna show you kubectl get rs watch. Okay, so the new replica set already has three. Old one has one. Um, there you go. Now the old one has uh, no pods. Okay, so now let me just cancel this. So if I do this, kubectl get rs. Okay, so you have this new replica set, which has all the three pods, and the old one has no pods. Uh, so let's just check out the Nginx version on the new pods. So how do we do this? So if we do kubectl get pods, these are actually new pods. Uh, see, these names are new. And the age is 72 seconds, 57 seconds, 87 seconds. Uh, so they just came up. Okay, uh, by this time, you guys and girls know how to find out the image details in the pod. kubectl describe pods. Okay, then go to container image. Here you go. Nginx image Nginx colon 1.17. Okay, now the last thing I wanted to show you guys and girls is kubectl get rs. Remember before we tried to delete a replica set and it came back instantly. But now, if we delete the old replica set with no pods running underneath it, uh, this, should, this should get deleted. kubectl delete rs. All right, here we go, the moment of truth. Okay, deleted. If we run kubectl get rs again, there you go, the old replica set is deleted. The deployment doesn't bring it back because because it doesn't manage anything. Okay, so one thing to remember um, that generally these deployment files uh, will be kept as version. So you will check in into a GitHub or code commit or something. And anytime you want to make an update, you should just come here and update it rather than giving a imperative command in the terminal and updating the version. Uh, so if you want to go back down in case there are some issues with this, you can always change this and rerun this and then it will automatically deploy the new pods uh, with Nginx version 1.16. All right, guys and girls, that is the video. If you like the video, click the like button, smash it if you're into that kind of stuff and subscribe. I have a bunch of other helpful videos on AWS and how to switch your career. Uh, check them out. Uh, all right, I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.